For most of us, living means working. So to get the most out of life, men look for a way of making machines do some of their work. Wind was one answer, but it was not always reliable. They turned to another form of energy, and discovering that heat could drive machines, they opened up a great new reservoir of reliable power. New industries were born and new towns built to serve them. The arrival of the heat engine changed the whole way of life for people in many parts of the world. The first practical heat engines were driven by steam. Fed on coal and water, they were the foundation of the new industrial age. Day and night they worked, pumping, driving, turning, consuming each day thousands of tons of coal. During the 19th century, coal was by far the best fuel available. It also yielded a valuable byproduct, gas for lighting and heating. But this gas was now used for another purpose, as a source of power in the so-called atmospheric gas engine patented by Otto and Langen in 1860. For years, men had been trying to do away with boilers and to burn fuel inside the cylinder. Now, coal gas made this possible. But these early internal combustion engines were temperamental, and their power output was too limited to challenge the power of the steam engine. It was not until 1877, when Otto adapted the principles of the four-stroke cycle theory of the French scientist, Beau de Russia, that a really practical internal combustion engine was built. The Otto silent gas engine, as it was known, was the forerunner of all modern four-stroke engines. First stroke, induction. A mixture of gas and air is drawn into the cylinder. Second stroke, compression. Third stroke, power. The mixture is ignited and expands, driving the piston outward. Four stroke, exhaust. With the discovery of petroleum, a new source of power was born, and the internal combustion engine developed rapidly. Similar in principle to the gas engine, the gasoline engine had the advantage of utilizing an easy to handle fuel. Thus, it was ideal for use in the motor car. In contrast to the gasoline engine, another type of internal combustion engine was built in 1890. Designed by Ackroyd Stewart, this machine was used for driving stationary power plants. It ran on a heavier petroleum fuel and was known as the hot bulb oil engine. The engine comprises a vaporizer, or hot bulb, from which the hot gases pass through a narrow passage into the working cylinder. In the cylinder is a piston joined by a connecting rod to the crankshaft and the heavy flywheel. Before starting, the vaporizer is heated by a blow lamp to high temperature. The flywheel is then turned over by hand. Pure air is sucked into the working cylinder and the oil fuel is sprayed into the hot bulb. During the second stroke, air and vaporized fuel are mixed together and compressed. The high temperature in the vaporizer causes combustion, and the piston is forced outward by the expanding gases. Finally, the burnt gases are expelled from the cylinder. Once the engine was running, the heat retained in the hot bulb was enough to ensure combustion, and the blow lamp was no longer necessary, 
These simple engines could run for long periods at a constant speed, and they gained a wide reputation for reliability. The 19th century saw enormous progress in the development of heat engines of all kinds, and towards its close, there were four main types in general use. The oil engine with hot bulb vaporizer, the steam engine, which was still considered supreme for a wide variety of uses, the gas engine for stationary power plants, and the rapidly improving gasoline engine. All these engines worked on the same basic principle of turning heat into work. But in each case, the amount of heat turned into work was small. The efficiency was low. Six percent for the average steam engine. Ten percent for the oil engine. Seventeen percent for the gas engine. And twelve percent for the gasoline engine. Looking at these facts, Rudolf Diesel was certain that it should be possible to build an engine with a very much higher efficiency. From the start, he was convinced of four things. He must get away from the steam engine entirely. Combustion must take place inside the cylinder. Air, not steam, must be the working medium. And finally, the air must be highly compressed so as to permit the greatest possible expansion. He remembered the pneumatic match, or fire piston. A small cylinder, usually made of wood or glass, into which a closely fitting piston or plunger could be inserted. The head of the piston was recessed so as to hold a piece of dry tinder. When the air in the cylinder was highly compressed, it became so hot as to cause the tinder to ignite. The fire piston gave a clue to a practical means of securing combustion inside the cylinder. Compression, ignition. Diesel adapted this principle to the internal combustion engine and described the cycle for the first time in 1892. A downward stroke of the piston, pure air is sucked into the cylinder. The air is then compressed to the point where it reaches the temperature necessary for combustion. Fuel is introduced into the compressed air. Owing to the high temperature, it takes fire and produces heat, which is turned into work. During the fourth stroke, the spent gases are forced out of the cylinder. The first experimental engine was built at Augsburg in Germany during 1893. Most people were convinced that no machine would work at the high pressures which diesel insisted were necessary for combustion and essential for high thermal efficiency. Los, Riemen einrücken. This engine never ran under its own power. One of the main problems facing diesel arose from the high pressures inside the cylinder. An exact quantity of oil fuel had to be sprayed finely and accurately through a dense wedge of compressed air. It was found that the fuel pump by itself could not do the job effectively. So an air pump was added which could blow the fuel into the combustion chamber. The principle was similar to that of a perfume atomizer. The method was known as air blast injection. By 1894, a completely new and redesigned engine had been built and preparations were complete for the first trial run. <laughs> 